Good afternoon. This is Rich Ness, and I am here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. Our, interview, our interviewee today is Jimmy Pukheim, and he is the chairman and CEO of Blue Vision. Hi, Hello, how are Jimmy. You? How are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am fine. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking. Okay, so Blue Vision is one of the pioneers in beacon technology. Now, um, I'd like to have you explain what that means exactly, because I'm, I'm sure there's people who are a little unsure what beacon technology is. Would you do that, please? Absolutely. So uh, beacons are Bluetooth, small Bluetooth devices that they turn on very fast periodically, and they emit a unique identifier, and then they turn off. The interesting thing about this is that, uh, and they run, of course, they run out of a watch battery. So they can last for a long, long years and a uh, long time, and you can attach them to anything that you might want to attach to, very easy installation. Um, the, the, the interesting thing, and you tell, for instance, the cloud, you tell an app that that object has a beacon with this identifier. When a phone is near, nearby that, that object, um, whether it's an asset, an airport, a building, a retail store, when a, when a phone is nearby that object and sends senses the Bluetooth signal with that specific identifier, it, it, it can do two things. It will know its position. It knows that it's very close to that object. So that's the first thing that it will do, which is basically presence. And th second, it can do ranging. What is ranging? It can approximate what is the distance by measuring the signal, the signal strength, just like your phone has bars, uh, and you know how, much, how strong the signal strength is to the nearest cell tower. Same, same goes here. A, a phone can measure signal strength to that beacon, and therefore it could subtract from that the range to that, uh, approximately the range to that beacon. Okay, so what is the specific problem that you're solving with this technology? We're solving many, many problems. The first problem, we call it uh, indoor location, as everybody knows, GPS, which is a great technology, and our lives would be very different without GPS. GPS does, that do not penetrate indoor buildings. So when you're inside a store, an airport, a, a um, a supermarket and so on, a, a warehouse, GPS signals do not penetrate. So, so you, 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 the phone doesn't know the, its location within that building, uh, whether it's a shopping mall or, or so on. And, and by utilizing this technology, you can pinpoint and know exactly where you are inside the, uh, the indoor location. That's the first thing that we solve. Second thing is now you can do asset tracking through your phone. Before, uh, you could really uh, tag items, whether it's in retail, whether it's in commerce, even your personal stuff, you couldn't tag them uh, and measure them with your phone because your phone did not have RFID. Even NFC, which is a great technology, you have to be extremely close by the item to, to read its position or, or know that it's there. With, with, with beacons, we can use them for asset tracking, and, uh, and using that, you will know, we have, you'll be able to know what inventory I have. And, and, and we're not talking about we, we, we can, you can tag from bicycles, cars, but also more personal items such as a, a carts or, or, or trays. We're doing asset tracking within buildings, hospitals, where the wheelchairs are, where the stretches, where the medical carts, medicine. So there's a lot of, and now you can, you can track, track them and, and, and know their, their position using your own private phone. So that's, that's a, a, a nice a new a solution that, we, that we're providing here. Well, that's a great explanation. Thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to shift gears a little bit, and um, I'm not sure if people are aware, you are the inventor of a pretty famous product called the Stick and Find. Now, that product was a crowd-funded product, and I know that the, there are many people who have aspirations of doing a crowd-funded product, which is very much in vogue these days, but uh, are, are scared off for lots of reasons. Um, what are some of the things that people should be aware of if, if they choose to go that route that they may not have learned, you know, that, that, that they're able to learn from somebody who's actually been through the process? Right. So, yeah, so we, we actually launched ourselves using crowdfunding uh, at Indiegogo. We did that two, almost two and a half years ago uh, with the Stick and Find. So Stick and Find was our first beacon. Uh, today, the beacons that we're deploying everywhere are actually almost the same. It's using the same, same technology, same, almost the same everything, just probably different sizes, shapes, and batteries, but it's the same product. We, we targeted them, uh, consumers, so that they can find their keys, their wallets, their remote controls, their pets, their keys, their kids, 
and it was extremely successful. Uh, and that's that was really our launch board, and that's that, that, our launch pad, and that's really what helped us get to where we are today. Um, now, in, in terms of the success of a crowd uh, a crowd funding project, I think that the key to a success to the success of that is research, and that's really what what we did back then. Research, 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 research. That means that just don't don't go. If you have a great idea, don't just go and do it. Research, research. Uh, your competition. Research not only your competition, but research success stories. Who has succeeded? Why? Try to try to learn and, and, and learn what they've done, what they did that was right. Try to find common success among success. Meaning, if you if look at ten success stories and try to find out what is very common about those ten success stories that got crowdfunding. And I, I'd like to say that the bottom line, really the bottom line, is not succeeding on a crowdfunding campaign. I don't think that calls or, or quantifies a success, meaning that if your goal is $60,000 or $80,000 and you get half a million or a million, that doesn't translate into success. You, you've built your life and you're good to go. No, that, that's just the first step. The second step is what comes after. What do you do with that? Most people think that they get the money and they can use that money to, to, to buy a car. No. You take that money and you reinvest that in your company, but you have to plan that. You have to be able to, to, to overcome a lot of obstacles, and you have to be able to scale. And, and uh, I, I think that, that's the, that, that is what is. So it's not the instance that you you've be, were able to go beyond your, your target or, or your goals. I think that you have to know and be prepared to what's next if you do that. And if you are able to do that and scale and grow, then it is a, it is a success. We're today. We already we started off two years and a half years ago. We were four guys with a with some background with a junior a junior house with a great background. But we had we were only four guys with very little revenue. Today we're we're more than thirty guys and we're in many airports worldwide, mostly the international and domestic airports worldwide. We're talking with the biggest retailers. We're doing uh, shopping malls. We're doing a lot of interesting stuff and major stuff. But I can tell you that we, I don't still quantify ourselves as success. I think that success will will be when when uh, <laughs> when I guess when when it's called a success story when I know that everything uh, is, is 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 good and stable and and we're not a startup anymore and we we're profitable beyond our dreams. Then that's a success. So we're still there. <laughs> Well, that's great, and, uh, and I think that's great advice for our folks, and hopefully you will be successful and financially successful beyond your wildest dreams. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. That was Jimmy Buchheim. He is the chairman and CEO of Blue Vision. Thank you very much, Jimmy. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.